Warren, uh, this comes uh, from a shareholder who I think is here who asked to remain anonymous, uh, writes, three years ago you were asked at the meeting about how you thought we should compensate your successor. You said it was a good question and you would address it in the next annual letter. We've been patiently waiting. Can you tell us now, at least philosophically, how you've been thinking about the way the company should compensate your successor so we don't have to worry when the pay consultants arrive on the scene? Yeah. Well, uh, unfortunately, at my age, I don't have to worry about things I say, said three years ago, but this guy, obviously much younger, remembers. <laughs> I'm not, well, I'll accept his word that I said that. But the, uh, there's a couple possibilities, actually, uh, and I don't want to get into details on them, but you may have, and I actually would hope that we would have somebody, A, that's already very rich, which they should be, been, been working a long time, and have got that kind of ability, that's very rich, and really is not motivated by whether they have 10 times as much money as they and the families can need or 100 times as much. And they might even wish to perhaps set an example of by engaging for something far lower than actually what you could say their true market value is. And that could or could not happen. I think it'd be terrific if it did, but, but I, can't, I can't blame anybody for uh, wanting their market value. And then uh, if they didn't elect to go in that direction, I would say that you uh, would probably pay them a very modest amount and then have an option which increased in value by, or increased in striking price annually. Nobody does this hardly. The Washington, Graham Holdings has done it. The Washington Post company did a little bit but would increase because, assuming that there were substantial retained earnings every year, because why should somebody retain a bunch of earnings and then claim they'd actually improve the value simply because they withheld the money from shareholders? So very easy to design that, and in private companies, people do design it that way. They just don't want to do it in public companies because they get more money the other way. Uh, but they might have a very substantial one that could be exercised. Uh, but whether shareholders, shares had to be held for a couple of years after retirement so that they really got the result over time that the majority of the stockholders would be able to get them and not be able to pick their spots as to uh, when they exercised and sold a lot of stock. It, it would, it's not hard to design. Uh, and it really depends who you're dealing with in terms of actually how much they care about money and having money beyond what they can possibly use. And most people do have an interest in that, and I don't blame them. Uh, but I, I don't know, what do you think, Charlie? Well, I, one thing I think is that I have avoided all my life compensation consultants. To me, it's sort of, I hardly can find the words to <laughs> express my contempt. <laughs> I will say this, if the, if the board hires a compensation consultant after I go, I will come back. <laughs> <laughs> Mad. Mad. <laughs> so I think there's a lot of mumbo-jumbo in this field, and I don't, I don't see it going away. Oh, it isn't going to go away. Yeah. No, it's going to get worse. And, and, I mean, the, if you look at... Uh, I mean, uh, the way compensation gets handled, I mean, it... it you know, everybody looks at everybody else's proxy statement and says we I can't know. possibly hire a guy that hasn't been... Uh, it's you know, ridiculous. ...and so on. And, and the Human Relations Department, you know, who worked for the CEO, come in and suggest a consultant. What consultant is ever going to get another assignment if he says you should pay your, your CEO below the... <laughs> down in the fourth quartile because you're yeah. getting a fourth quartile result? It, I mean, it just... You know, it... It, it, yeah. it isn't that the people are evil or anything. It's just the nature of the situation situation just it produces a result that is not consistent with how representatives of the owners should, should behave. It's even think. worse than that. <laughs> Capitalism is the is the golden goose that that we all live on. And if people generally get so they have contempt for it because they don't like the pay arrangements and the 
system, uh, your capitalism may not last as well. And, and that's like killing the golden goose. So I, I think the existing system has a lot wrong with it. I think there is something coming in pretty soon. I may be wrong about this, where companies are going to have to put in their proxy statement, the uh, CEOs pay to the average payer or something like that. That isn't going to change anything. I mean, it won't change a thing. It won't change a thing. And, and you know, it'll cost us. And by rate. the way, it won't get any headlines either. Um, it'll be tucked away. It'll cost us a lot of money with 367,000 people employed around the world. And uh, I mean, we'll hope to get something that makes it somewhat simpler so we can use estimates or something of the sort. But to, to get the median income or mean income or whatever, however the rules may read, you know, and... That's and, what uh, consultants are for, Warren. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, you know, it is human nature that produces this. And, you know, the most... I write in this letter to the managers every two years. I say the only excuse I won't take on something is that everybody else is doing it. But, of course, everybody else is doing it is exactly the rationale for why people did not want to count the cost of stock options as a cost. I mean, it was ridiculous. All these CEOs went to Washington, and they got the Senate, I think, to vote 88 to 9 to say the stock options aren't a cost. And then a few years later, you know, that it became so obvious that, that they finally put it in so it was a cost. You know, it reminded me of Galileo or something. I mean, all these guys. Worse. It was way worse. <laughs> but, the Pope behaved better to Galileo than the, he, he was. Well, anyway, it's, it, I would hope, you know, like I say, somebody, whoever, and it doesn't even have to be, I'm not talking about the current successor or anybody else. I mean, it, 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 there, these successors down the line are probably going to have gotten very, very wealthy by the time. They're running Berkshire, and and uh, the incremental value of of wealth gets very close to zero uh, at some point, and and uh, there is a chance to use it as a as a, a different sort of model. But I don't have any problem if it's a system is devised that recognizes retained earnings. Nobody, I've never heard anybody talk about it. Uh, you know it the 20 boards I've been on, or, you know, if you, if you and I were partners in a business, you know, and we kept retaining earnings in the business, and I kept having the value to buy a portion of you out at a constant price, you'd say this is idiocy. But, of course, that's the way all the option systems are designed, and it's better to be to, for the CEO and for the consultants. And, and of course, usually if there's, there's some correlation between what CEOs are paid and what boards are paid. If CEOs were getting paid at the rate that they got paid 50 years ago, adapted to present dollars, um, director pay would be lower. At, uh, so it's, you know, it's got all these built-in things that, to some extent, uh, uh, sort of kindle the. No the, Berkshire director is in it for the money. Well, they are. They own a lot of stock. And they bought it in the market, just like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's a very old-fashioned system. I looked at one company the other day, and seven of the directors had never bought a share of stock with their own money. Now they've been given stock, but not one of the, not one of the. the, the I mean, I didn't say not one. Seven of the directors had never actually bought a share of stock, and there they are, you know, making decisions on who should be CEO and how they should be paid and all that sort of thing. But then. They've never felt like shelling out a dollar themselves. Now they've been given a lot of stock. It's, you know, we're dealing with human nature here, folks. <laughs> and that what you want is to have a system that works well in spite of how human nature is going to drive it. And, and we've done awfully well in this country in that respect. I mean, American businesses overall has done very, very well for, for the Americans generally. Uh, but not every aspect of it is exactly what you want to teach your kids. Mm -hmm.